Hello, my loves, and welcome back. Have you tried animal communication, but it doesn't seem to work for you? Are you frustrated that you wish that you could connect with your cat? Hear what they have to say. They could tell you what they need. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you five reasons why you're potentially blocked and can't use animal communication. If you haven't already subscribed to the Naturally Cats YouTube channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button along with the bell to get notifications of my new releases so you can help your cat with every video. Now, let's dive in. So I have been using animal communication on and off for probably about mm, eight years or more, maybe. I kind of lose track of, of clock time. And I remember the very first animal communication workshop I did mm, nearly 15 years ago. And I was amazed at how easy it could be. However, there are times when I get stuck. So I've been doing it for clients. I've been doing it with my boys. I've been doing it for myself. And there are still times when I get stuck, I get blocked. And I wanted to share with you what they are, because I'm sure that you've experienced them too. I'm also going to share with you how you can deal with them so that you can receive the essence and wisdom of your cats. So the first one is that you're stuck in your head. Now, by that, I mean, those of us that are empaths and sensitives, like me, we have times when emotions are overwhelming and we can come up into our headspace because it's almost more comfortable. We can focus on the day to day, the doing, the things to do, the to do lists. We can get also get lost in worry, particularly I look up because Leo's photos up there, like when Leo doesn't eat, when he walks up to a plate of food and walks away, my anxiety goes through the roof. I come straight up into my head. I'm worried and doubting and fearful and all this other stuff. So that's a time when I desperately want to communicate with him. Yet I'm kind of in my own way with that because if I'm worried and fearful and scared, I can't connect with him. I can't come into my heart space. I can't feel this kind of deeper soul to soul connection with him because I'm worried because my vibration and my frequency my emotional state are all quite low so I wonder if you've had this do you have those times when you are desperate to connect with your cat and you know that you've kind of done a bit of communication in the past or you do it regularly perhaps and it works but there are times when it just doesn't happen for you in my Become a Solid Cat Guardian program, we have four modules. The first two are about the human, the guardian. Because if we don't look after ourselves, we've got no chance of connecting with our cats. So if you are in your head and you're lost in worry, anxiety, doubt, fear, etc., my first recommendation for you is to nurture you. I know you might be desperate to want to connect with your cat, but that's never going to happen if you are stuck up here in your head. So go for a walk, go and meditate, put a calming track of music on and just sit with your breath, with your hands on your body. Talk to a friend, share with a partner, journal, whatever works for you. And it will be different things depending on the day and the mood and how you're doing. But it's important that you make time and create the space for you to be able to check in with you to deal with whatever it is that's going on and even though I know you're desperate to connect with your cat making yourself a priority and creating that time and space to work on you is the way to connect with your cat so that's the first one it's honoring what you need to be able to support your mental state your emotional state your physical body so that you can lean into your spiritual connection. Okay, so the second one, I hear this quite a lot actually, and it was quite prevalent when we started the Become a Soul Ed Cat Guardian program, and people were scared of what they would hear. Does this sound familiar for you? Are you worried that if you start to connect with your cat, that you hear their thoughts, that you notice how they feel they're going to share with you that you're a bad cat mum or dad that you're doing things wrong that you're not doing enough for them I've had that too I was quite petrified when I started using this method of communicating with my boys and with pickle because I was scared scared of what I'd hear 
scared of what they'd share with me, scared of what they tell me, scared of the judgment that would come from them. And I can wholeheartedly say with all the clients that I've worked with, with all the cats that I've worked with, and with everybody in the Become a Solid Cat Guardian program, never has there been judgment, not once. Never has there been a cat that said, you're doing it wrong. In my experience, all of the connections that I've experienced myself and witnessed through other people, cats speak through love and honour and truth. And that truth isn't like a harsh human truth. You know, like you're doing it wrong. You're a bad cat mum. It's never like that, ever. It's always about like, we see you, we understand what you're doing and thank you for everything you're giving us. So if you have those doubts, if you're scared of what you'll receive, I'd really encourage you to journal on it. And I know this may not be for everyone, and you can do journaling in different ways. Yes, you can get a pen and paper, but you can also put your headphones in and go for a walk and just talk. Talk as if you are journaling. Pretend that you're on the phone to someone. Whatever it may be, it has to come out. So whatever those fears are that you're scared of hearing, look at them, okay? Find a way to sit with them and say, like, I see you. I understand this. And I am going to try to trust and try to believe that my cat won't say that. And it may take a bit of time. You might need to use a different, a couple of different tools. But once you feel into this fear of yours, it will shift. Because a fear comes from up here in your head. It's your thoughts. It's your doubts. It's those stories and beliefs that you're telling yourself. And when you come into your heart space, it's different. It's about, yes, you can do it and the cat will be there to receive you and you will be able to make it work. So if you're scared, first of all, just admit to yourself like, I am scared and that's okay. And maybe that's all you need to do. Okay, so before we move on to the next one, I'm going to ask you to come into the comments below and just let me know if either of these first two have resonated with you. Can you relate to what I'm sharing here? And have you had this too? So come into the comments and let me know. Okay, the next one that we're going to talk about is that you don't believe that you can. So it's slightly different to the, to the one before, but it's about thinking that you don't have this magical gift. It's about telling yourself that you're not special enough. You you know, Julianne can do it, but I can't do it. She's better at it than me. She's different. She's special, you know, whatever it may be. But it's about saying to yourself, like, I can't do it. I don't believe that's true. Everybody has the capacity to connect with their cats. It might be you need help with how to do it. It might be that you need to do some of the pre-work, like I said, with the Become a Solid Cat Guardian program. The first two modules, it's all about the, the guardian. It's about helping you to understand what limiting beliefs you have, what fears are holding you back, what previous trauma you've got that shapes how you deal and interact with your cat. So there is work to be done to connect with your cat. But it is, is the bottom of all of that work is, you know, at your core, do you not believe that you can? And again, like, that's okay. That's okay if that's where you are and that's where you're starting with all of this. A lot of the times, admitting what's going on for you can really help things to shift. So we have a mantra in the Solid Guardian program, find it, feel it and release it. So even like that first step, finding it, just admitting that like, I'm scared that I will hear bad things. I don't think that I can do it. I'm scared and stuck in my head. Even admitting that to yourself will help you to shift. So if you don't believe that you can, I'm going to ask you to start to change that, to get yourself a notebook and to start making notes of when you have these moments of interaction with your cat where things are different. Now, by that, I mean, start to talk to them like verbally, you know, using your voice. Take the pressure off that you've got to find this psychic connection and be able to telepathically hear them and receive them. Okay talk to them like day to day like I talk to my boys all the time so 
get a notebook get get a book that is just for you and your cat and i'm going to ask you to do something which is about recording what we call it in the solid guardian program data points now these are about capturing moments that help to shift your mindset so if you if you're here, like I don't believe I can connect with my cat and you want to be here, which is I can effectively communicate with my cat. How do you get from one to the other? It's literally like little tiny stepping stones, which is what the data points are. It's reminders to your brain that things are different to what you formally believe. So talk to your cat, say to them, ask them for guidance, for support. Once your cat knows that you are shifting your, your perspective, shifting yourself, shifting your energy to be able to communicate with them, they will help you. They will guide you. They will support you. They will inspire you. They will nurture you as you take a step down this path. So for example, when I was talking to Leo verbally about getting baby Max, this is only two or three years ago when I could do animal communication. I was worried, was worried whether it was the right thing to do or not. So I was stuck up in my head. So rather than try to sit and find the Zen space and receive the wisdom of Leo, I asked him, how would you feel if we had a second cat? Like, are you ready to share your space? And a couple of other questions. And every time I asked him verbally that question or a question, he gave me a sign. He would tilt his head and head boot me, which for Leo is, you know, a, a, a sign of kind of connection one answer to the question he put his paw on my face again it's another way that I connect with Leo so how do you connect with your cat do they come up on your lap do they give you eye kisses do they touch your face do they boop at you know your leg whatever it may be but find some quiet time and verbally speak to your cat and share with them I'm trying animal communication can you work with me on this and whatever they do in response, make a note of it. So for me, I would have in my notebook, say five questions that I asked Leo, you know, he touched my face, um, he tilted his head and gave me a boop. He laid down and gave me eye kisses. Basically, he sat there while I talked to him. So give it a go and start to make a note. And what you'll find is that you will see more and more like, what some people may call coincidences come in that you can put in your book so maybe you're sat watching telly and you think about one of your cats like I do this with baby Max all the time I was sat watching telly I'll look at the clock and be like oh I need to get him in in a minute and within five to ten minutes he comes you know trundling across the garden now it may seem like a coincidence to some and again that's because that's your head giving you that explanation but for me, like, I believe that that is the connection, our soul to soul connection, literally like in action. So before you try to connect and communicate with them, you love your cat so deeply and dearly, you already have a soul to soul connection. It's just about tapping into it. So help your head to align with your heart and make those notes. Write the evidence down so that you can read it, reread it, and you can support yourself when you think I don't believe I can do this. Well, actually, hang on a second. I've got three pages here of when I coincidentally engaged or interacted with my cat. Okay. The next one, which I, I struggled with, is you don't trust in what you receive. So I remember when I did uh, my first animal communication workshop and some of you may have had me share this story before. And it was a dog and we were asked, told to ask it, what was its favorite food? And everybody gave their answers. We were all sat in a semicircle. And I gave my answer and I said, I can't remember which way around it was so many years ago. I think I said, um, it's yogurt. And when everybody had given their answers, we were told that actually, his favorite food was rice pudding. Now, when I was asked by the instructor why I'd said yogurt, I said, well, because what came through was white and sticky. So my, so I was like, well, it must be yogurt. And what I was advised by the uh, 
the facilitator was that actually if I'd have just given that answer to the guardian of the dog his favorite food is white and sticky I could have been right because it was rice pudding so whatever you receive first and foremost in that split second when you ask the question that is your answer now the more you practice animal communication it's like a muscle the stronger your you will receive the answers and responses but when we are working in the kind of spiritual realm on you know on an energetic frequency that first thing that you receive in that split second before you've probably even finished answering uh, asking the question is your answer what happens is when we receive something energetically because our logical brains need to make sense of it otherwise you know we we're not safe except that's a whole conversation for another day the heads try to rationalize what you've received so for me if someone said to me you know white and sticky my head thinks oh it's yogurt when actually no it was rice pudding so again this is where you want to use your cat specific notebook and you might want to put your data points at the front and then these experiences at the back and literally just write down what comes in. And it may not make sense to start with, and that's okay. You are learning a new skill. It's like learning a new language. Sometimes you get the tenses right. Sometimes you get the words muddled. You might use beer when you meant bus or whatever it may be. It's just about practice. Again, if you ask your cat for help with this, they will support you. So try it. Try it. Give it a go. See how it resonates with you. and remember all of the, the blocks that we've talked about so far you need to work with all of them okay so it's no good sitting down to work with your cat if you don't believe you can do it right so then the last one is li like not knowing what to do like how do you communicate with your cat how do you go how do I go from sitting here recording this video sharing this content and information with you to receiving the soul essence and wisdom of Leo or baby Max like what do you do so first of all, I would say you find people that you trust. Me, other people, you find people that you resonate with and you come into their community. You soak up their free content, videos, classes, workshops, whatever it may be, because even by attending those things, watching that content will help your heads to start to think, hmm, maybe I can do this. Hmm, I'm going to give it a go. You will start to shift your perspective and your energy. So find people that you trust and that you resonate with and work with them. You may not want to pay for a course. You may not want to pay for a treatment. But there are so many of us out there that have content like this online that you can work with. So I've got a video, uh, How to Speak Cat, Top Tips to Communicate with Your Cat. So give it a watch. I talk in there about, you know, simple ways to connect with yourself to then be able to connect with your cat. And if you're interested to take a bigger step, I have the Become a Soul Ed Cat Guardian program. So like I've said to you before, it's got four modules. The first two are about the human, the second two are about the cat. And it's not just, it's not just an animal communication course. It's so much more. It's about helping you to get out of your own way to lead literally from your heart space and your soul with your cat every day. I consider myself a soul led cat guardian. And don't get me wrong, it's not all rainbows and unicorns. There are days when my anxiety is off the charts. But what I do is I use the tools, the techniques, and things that I've put into the soul led guardian program to help myself. Some days I have to work on me. Some days I can work with the boys and that's that's the way it goes because we're all human. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. I'd love to hear from you. Please come into the comments and share with me which one of these blocks resonate with you, which one of the uh, suggestions uh, that I've shared with you are you going to give, give a go. And thank you for watching. It's been an honour to share with you some of my experience and I hope it's helped you. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.